Good afternoon, ladies. My name is Dalapolu Malaya. I am an accountant and a member of the EPR network. Thank you so much for joining us for this month's April webinar. We are the EPR Women's Network. Our vision is to help women and empower them and see them succeed personally and professionally. If today is your first time joining us, you are welcome. Kindly include in the chat box who invited you and where you're from. In addition, if you have any questions, kindly include them in the chat box. We are recording via Zoom and Facebook. Please post your questions and I will be handing over to Chichi. Chichi? I think you might be on mute. Hi ladies, thanks again for joining us for the April webinar of the EPR Women's Network. Again, if you are joining us for the first time, uh, thank you so much. And we just wanted to make sure that we had a, um, a webinar that was, that was relevant, but also that was, um, that was innovative. We wanted to help some of our small business owners, some of our women, some of, some of those among us who have creative ideas that have been sitting on them for so long. As we all know, uh, the whole world has suffered the COVID-19 pandemic, and we're in a moment of crisis. We're in a moment of transition. And while we're still grappling with that, moments of transition are a beautiful time for us to create opportunities. And we're really excited to have our guest speaker here today. She is phenomenal. And we are going to be speaking about the topic, turning crisis uh, into opportunities. As you know, with every EPR Women's Network webinar, we have great content for you. We have moments of engagement, but we want to have this be actionable, right? We want this to be very actionable. So if you can take a moment, grab some notes, grab some, uh, you know, some notepads, grab a pen, because um, this is one session that you're definitely going to be engaging very well. And with that, I'm just going to introduce our guest speaker. So Tokes Arotori is um, a nursery interior designer, and she is an internationally acclaimed creator of nursery spaces. So she is the founder of her company called The Baby Cot Shop, and she is the leading authority on luxury interiors created for babies and children. So her curated work, her inspirational work has been featured in multiple magazines, including major British and international publications, so including Vogue and Hello Magazine. So her passion is helping women to remove limiting mindsets so that they can excel as they unearth their natural abilities and their gifts. So she does this through several means, through telling stories and uh, sharing experiences from her life and from her business. So she also has a passion for imparting knowledge to young teenagers. And her hope is that they can be set on the right path for self and career development. So she speaks in school, she mentors young people, and she's a prolific writer. So she has a blog and she has written internationally for various magazines and blogs. And last but not least, she is happily married to her best friend and they are blessed with four sons. Tokes, we're so happy that you're here today. Um, and to uh, sort of kick off the session, I want to turn it over to Miss Adenike Israel Bolarinwa, who is the founder and director of Esther's Preparation Room. So since 2013, Esther's Preparation Room has been tasked with um, really empowering women and young girls, right, and helping them achieve their life's purpose. So Adenike has a deep passion for helping women succeed professionally and personally so that they can take territories in whatever sector they're in, um, whether it's business, finance, uh, family, government, all of that. Um, EPR, as you know, has four global programs and currently exists in three global markets. Adenike, over to you. Thank you very much, Chi Chi, and thank you to everyone that has joined today. This is 
phenomenal. We're very excited to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we do have uh, an, an out outreach of uh, EPR, as we always call it, um, with our um, Nigeria team, with our UK team, and also for in our US market as well. So we're very thankful. On, uh, in one of our global programs, the network. We're excited to have you. Um, Tokes, who is actually our guest for today, actually has another uh, uh, reason for to be celebrated, which is the fact that today is her birthday. So we are quite excited. Uh, would like to say, Tokes, happy birthday to you. We thank God for you. Thank you for spending time with us today. Uh, thank you for spending a portion of your day with EPR pouring into everyone. We hope this would be a remarkable new year for you. We hope this would be a year that would be filled with amazing wonder, great opportunities as well. Amen. So thank you. Thank you very much. Now, just before I hand over to Turks, I actually wanted to do a poll, uh, like has been, uh, like my colleagues have uh, said earlier on. We're very passionate about uh, supporting the whole woman. We actually have four key programs. Uh, we believe that we uh, we put it into four simple slogans. We say EPR praise, EPR leads, EPR mentors, and EPR networks. So this is one of our global program, and it's all about enriching our lives. I know we have a lot of career and business professionals um, here, a lot of women with passions, gifts, and talents. And our job here is to network, strengthen ourselves, and to understand how we can continuously provide services to support uh, one another. So that being said, I'd like to run a quick poll and ask everyone. Um, we're doing a quick situation analysis. Um, you know, uh, everyone knows we are all on, well, most of the world really is on lockdown at this point with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and we're very curious, um, which three industries, wanted to ask this question, do you think have been most affected uh, by everything going on? And if there's anything that isn't here, we would like you to put it in the chat room. So we've put some industries here, but we would also like to see if you feel that, oh, apart from these, there are others. Um, we would like to, 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 to run a quick poll. Can everyone, um, Take a moment and just provide their thoughts. I think it's multi-choice, <laughs> just in case, then we can um, just select the top one and then we can use the chat to talk about it further. So I'm looking forward to seeing those responses. And I think Chichi, you'd let me know when. Um, we have a couple of, uh, we actually have a great turnout. So thank you everyone while we quickly run through this. So ladies, I'll give a couple more seconds until the poll will end. So we have about eight more people out of all of our attendees who have not voted. If you have a chance, this is the last call. Thank you. And like we said, feel free to put your thoughts in the chat room as well. If there's anything that you feel oh, we missed out in a particular industry, or oh, not the known industry, but they've been very, very affected. We'd love to see or uh, your thought, your response as well in the chat room. And yes, while we're doing that, please keep the, the birthday greetings coming. Oh. Good birthday talks, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So ladies, we have ended the poll. Yes. And can everybody see the poll results? I can see it. Can you scan well, them, but we are in admin. But uh, let me read it out, wow. So of all our respondents, and we had quite a, good turnout of uh, responses. We have the number one industry that has been affected is the travel industry, absolutely. Um, followed by hospitality, food, restaurant. Uh, so travel is 80%, hospitality 61%. Coming in closely is medical and healthcare, 52%. Um, and then I think we jump to one that most of us recognize here, events management, education, um, financial, and then sales and marketing. Amazing how sales and marketing is actually the lowest because I actually thought it would be the lowest just because of uh, how they would typically operate. But thank you. This, this is quite an eye-opener um, because we believe it's a good segue into today's meeting. Um, how do we prepare ourselves 
in this season, in this pandemic, for the opportunities that exist. Crisis, um, um, in the midst of a crisis, there's always opportunities for new things, new experiences, new things to learn, new ways to grow, and without a doubt, uh, new opportunities that create what we call a wealth transfer. We're going to be discussing this some more, but I'll now hand over to Tokes to just take us through a presentation as we then have further engagement uh, after all. As she as she delivers this presentation, please feel free. If you have any specific questions, you don't have to wait till the end. You can start popping it into the chat room. And as soon as she's done, we'll start running through everyone's questions. Thank you. And we will take your comments as well. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll hand over to Tokes. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much for the wonderful birthday greetings. I really appreciate them. I'm going to start with a question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Why do you use temporal, earthly solutions to solve a spiritual problem? The first question I asked was the same question that Jesus asked when, you know, we only had the resurrection celebration a week ago, less than a week ago. And um, Jesus asked the women when they went looking for Jesus, uh, the, and he said, you know, why are you looking for uh, the, why are you looking for the leaving among the dead? Now, Big dreams come to everyone, but not everyone is going to do the work to see the dream manifested into a reality. I thought I coined the word visioning, and then I did a Google search to see if there was anything like that. And um, turned out that it's not a real word in the dictionary, but a few companies have used them. And for me, my definition of visioning is anything that helps you to put the steps on paper or the practice really of putting the steps on paper that lead directly from the dream or the opportunity to the reality. So this is not my first time and for many of us, it's not our first time facing a crisis. My first major crisis or my most recent major crisis would be the 2008 recession where I lost my business and I lost absolutely everything that I ever owned. And um, that was quite an experience. And I had to go through these steps, which some of which I will share with you because of time limitations, I wouldn't be able to walk through all of them. But the steps include obstacle course navigating and understanding that you have everything in you to see it, to see it manifested. So the first slide that you, the first slide you can see, which I've called the idea pathway, is my attempt at showing you how an idea or an opportunity carry, follows the direction from the spirit realm, which is where we receive it, through our soul, through our body, and it's eventually manifested in the world. So that is an experience that people can have. So you ask. Jesus in Christ, we know that we are made of spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is a part of you that's connected to God. Your soul is the container, if you like, for your mind. And your body is what we all see as the physical, you know, our physical body. The sad thing about it is that many people, many of us, we actually live our lives focused more on the physical realm than we do on the spirit realm. And the spirit realm is the causal realm. It's where the idea that you've been carrying in your head for years, where you think it came to you in a dream or you saw someone do something and you thought I could do better. Every single idea that we have as believers come from the spirit realm because they come from our purpose. So understanding purpose as well is the one, one more definition before I launch in is that your purpose is the reason you were created quite simply. And I believe that inside you is a seed of your purpose. And that seed contains the desires, the ideas, the talents, the, the gifts, the opportunities. It has everything that you need to see it fully manifested in the physical realm. So this, the slide shows the, uh, the spirit realm, the spirit man connected to the, to the spirit realm. And that's an, an indication of how you get your ideas. So let's say that you have been carrying this picture in your mind for years and you just know that you would love to, I don't know, let's, let's use a business, for example. You'd like to start a business that, um, let's say you want to produce garments or a fashion line that's suitable for Christian women, but yes, it's very stylish and, you know, uh, going along with the times. So you have this idea it's part of your purpose to create it. It doesn't mean that the creating itself is your purpose, but it's, a, it's an activity that you need to take care of. And that's why 
it wouldn't go away. So if you have an idea that's always there, it's not going to go away. If this is really the path in which ideas go, it goes from your spirit to your soul, to your body, to be manifested in the world, then the obstacles and the challenges are going to be, are going to interrupt the process at any one of these steps. So let's take the woman for, um, I'm not able to change the slide. And I have the next one, please, the next slide. Thank you. So we'll call them dream killers. Anything that op that 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 op that um, interrupts the pathway for a manifestation of an idea is a dream killer or an opportunity killer or an idea killer. It basically is anything that's stopping the dream from reaching your body. So take a woman, for example, who is very busy. She's a full-time worker. She's also trying to grow a business on the side. She has children, she has a husband. Her life is extremely busy and her dream is, str is struggling to make its way into her mind. So she knows she has an idea, but she literally cannot get, the, get herself settled enough to fit it into her mind, spread it out there, see the full picture, start to make plans on how it should happen because that's what happens in the mind. The mind is where we process the idea so that it eventually we pass the idea to the body and then we, we act it out. If you have no space in your mind, you will not be able to manifest any idea whatsoever. You might have an idea, you might walk around with the ideas, you might walk around with a plan, you might walk around with a picture of the business, but if your mind is full of rocks, and I go on to the next slide please, um, that you, you would not literally, you wouldn't be able to manifest it. So the story goes about the professor, which you may have heard of, that um, explained the, the, the story between, or the relationship between rocks, pebbles, and sand. And what he did was put in the rocks into a jar, and he asked the class, is the jar full? And they said, yes. Then he added pebbles, and he goes, is the, is the jar full? And he's like, oh, yes, now it definitely is. And then he added sand, and he goes, is the jar full? And they're like, yes, definitely it is. And all that it is is explaining or showing us that there are certain areas in our lives that we have to consider to be rocks. There are some areas that we consider pebbles, which are less important than the rocks, and there are some areas that you will consider to be sand. So your work, your, your ministry, your, your family will qualify as a rock. And these are the most important things that need to be in your life that you can't get rid of. But unfortunately, many of us actually have got ideas and we have, or rather we have activities that we have um, elevated to the role of a rock. And really it's not a rock. You know, listening on the phone to a friend or a relative who has nothing to do but complain all day long about the situation in her life might be taking up a long time, a, a, lot of, a lot of your time, and you might consider it to be a rock. And yes, it is a rock, but it's only a rock because that's what you have made it. It might not be your rock to carry. Attending church four, five, six times a week because you are in charge of a particular ministry that really doesn't have much to do with your purpose in life is a rock, but is it your rock to carry? So we have to understand what is taking up the space in our minds, because if your mind is full of stuff, if your days are full of stuff, you will not be able to manifest the ideas that you have. There are many business courses and there are many webinars and, and all kinds of gurus and writings and so on that tell us why things, the things that we need to do to see a business idea manifest or to take an opportunity, take up opportunity in a crisis like this one. But the truth of the matter is you are the same person before, before, during and after the crisis. And if you don't take care of the issues that you have within you, you can see, an we, we're surrounded by opportunities every day. You will not manifest it. You will not be able to take advantage of it. The second reason, the second um, uh, reason that we, with the second dream killer rather, would be that you doubt the source. Do you doubt the source? You know, who, who is your source? A believer in Christ knows that their spirit is one with God and that they have the mind of Christ. And a believer in Christ should understand that the ideas they have are actually inspired by the Holy Spirit. And each one is actually trustworthy. You can trust the ideas that you have. Now, if you're not sure of the source of your ideas, you're not even going to let them into your mind. You're not even going to put them to practice. You'll literally say, well, that was just a silly idea. And one way in which you can distrust the source is by having little confidence in your own ability. You know, if you don't trust what you're capable of doing, you will not take the step to make it happen. Low self-esteem will tell you you're not worthy of even having the ideas that, or even not to talk about carrying them out. I know that I've 
I've had ideas and I've thought this would be really good. And then I look around and see things to myself, well, but nobody else is doing it. And then I clam up and I just kind of pull myself to the corner and just think it's not going to work. But I've since grown and I've since learned that that's not how to get things done. Um, looking around you for physical evidence that what the Holy Spirit has given to you is actually true is a, is a big thing that us make. You know, the other way in which the similar, similarly people might, you might look and think, okay, if it's glamorous, if it looks attractive, if it's pleasant, then it must be real. And that's another, another mistake a lot of people make because we make decisions based on the superficial and really the the spirit realm is the causal realm now marilyn monroe was was um, the darling of the big screen she was the darling of hollywood she was known as the blonde bombshell and everyone loved her but she was deeply unhappy men took advantage of her and she used their attention as a soapbox soapbox for her own self-esteem you know and if you're superficial in your judgment you could end up appearing successful to people and appearing successful to the world, but deep inside, which is where it really matters, you're unhappy. Oh, could we go to the next slide, please? You know, deep inside, it really matters, you're unhappy, and your dream should cause sorrow. I learned a, a lesson um, not so long ago about how people, how it's how easy it is for you to start to work towards appearing successful than actually being successful. And there's a big difference in that if you look around you, especially on social media, it's not hard to find. And it's very easy to do that as well. I think the worst case I, I saw was the case of vanity publishing, which is when, you know, you are, um, you're, you're, you're hired or you're basically, you pay a lot of money to co-write a book with a a very famous person and in reality you may not even have a book and you may never even have them and and it's made to seem as if you wrote a book together but what you don't know is that about 10 other people have done the same thing and you know and i think that that is is, is it, it's basically done to present a successful picture and all of the money and all of the effort that went towards creating that picture really should have gone towards creating or manifesting the idea Lack of planning is another way in which we can kill our dreams or, or not take a hold of the opportunities that surround us. If you don't take authority over your life and oversee the running of it, you will not succeed in turning that dream into reality. You know, nobody has got sudden illness scheduled into their calendar to say, okay, on the 21st of May, 2022, I expect to be in hospital. That's not, that life doesn't work like that. And so what you need to do then is create a buffer, create a system and a buffer so that even when disruption which is unexpected, even though it might be intense, will not be widespread. I um, was listening to Mrs. Idupu Awoshika the other day, and she was talking about how um, uh, the, when, her, when the value of the currency in Nigeria started to become unstable, her husband made the decision to liquidate some of their assets and then pay for their children's education. So I don't know how many more years the kids had in school, but he went ahead and he paid their various schools in full till the end of their education. And the reason he did that was that if the crisis were to happen or they were to lose their, their fortune and everything, it would be contained within a particular area of their lives and it wouldn't spread and affect the kids and affect their education and affect everything. So planning ahead of time and just really planning for uh, planning your life uh, and of course your business and whatever else it is you're doing is essential. But remember that when you plan uh, to make room and to create a buffer for problems to show up as well, because we live in the fallen world, it's going to happen. And the real thing about it is I discovered this about myself as well, that when I don't plan, it's only because I'm afraid that it is fine, I will fail. And therefore, when it fails, I can use the excuse and say, oh, it only failed because I didn't plan. It's not because I wasn't good enough or I didn't know what I was doing. But regardless of what it is, there's a scripture in Hebrews that says, mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong so the bible clearly tells us to mark out a straight path for our feet and we need to mark that path out and start working and so that even when the, you know the vicissitudes of life comes and tries to destabilize us 
we already know where we're going. Now, yes, we can attend to things that are happening, but we know where we're going. And imagine that you take this in combination with the rocks. You learn to recognize what is a pebble and what's, what's, what is sand that's been thrown in your path. And you learn not to um, keep running left and right and, and dealing with things that you have no business dealing with. Another um, uh, um, dream killer, next slide please, is the fear of pain. Ooh, the fear of discomfort will have you looking for the easy way out. You know, I grew up in a, in a home, I, I had a very happy childhood thanks to my parents and, you know, grew up with my brothers and we had a great childhood. We grew up with pets, right? We had every pet you could imagine. However, and I enjoyed having pets, we all loved it, it was part of our lives, but I denied my own children that joy of having pets because of the pain that my brothers and I experienced every time we lost a pet. And I thought, you know what? I don't want my kids to suffer. I don't want them to experience that pain. And therefore, even though they had been begging for a cat, begging for a dog and what have you, I was like, no, it's not gonna happen. And my excuse was like, well, you don't keep your room clean enough. How are you gonna look after a pet and so on? But eventually I relented. And the day that I picked up our, bed, our pet bunnies, we've got two adorable bunnies, Hera and Hazel. I understood that the doorway through which pain goes into your heart is the same door that joy goes in as well. So you cannot avoid joy. You cannot avoid pain in this life. If you try to avoid pain, you will also be closing the door to joy. So if you are in the habit of using pain or pleasure as, as a signpost for whether you're doing the right thing or where to go, that can be quite dangerous. You need to not do that because it will lead you off your path and onto a route that will lead to the wrong um, destination. It's the same the same um, would apply if you are looking, say you've started a business or you're building, I don't know, ministry or business, and then you start to judge the success of your business by how many Instagram followers you have or how many compliments you're receiving from people who actually love you, not your customers. You will find that your efforts will be going towards building your Instagram following and building your image so that you appear to be successful than actually being successful. And there is no substance if you appear to be successful and you really don't have anything on the inside. I do believe, though, that where we have gone off the path because we've uh, tried to avoid pain, that God is so faithful and he would keep on staring us back onto the right path, you know, and going on. The other... Um, the the sorry can i have the next slide please is to do yeah oh, so yeah and then the one after that as well actually you know and so the, the one after that is is the next um uh, the next dream killer opportunity click killer is do i live by other people's opinions this is huge for me you know the process of converting a dream to reality is actually quite an ugly one it's not pretty it's not glamorous by any means at all and you know we're all uniquely created we're created differently we have different um different uh, personalities we have different gifts and talents we have a different purpose your your dream is not always going to look pretty to other people so we need to now stop hoping that people will, will support it and people will agree with and people will celebrate us. We're all uniquely different. You know, the process to which you are about to manage, the path that you're going to take to manifest the idea or take a hold of the opportunity and turn it into wealth might be a very, it might be non-conventional. It might be very different. You know, I've had, I, I remember in running my business, I've been running this particular business for uh, 10 years now. I've been running it actually, sorry, for, yeah, for eight years, I've been running this particular business for, been running it for eight years. And I think that I spent the majority of my time fighting the opinions of others, but it wasn't because it came without asking. I was the one who would run cap in hand and say, what do you think I should do in this situation? And they will say to me, oh, Tox, I don't think that makes sense. Well, you know what? It didn't make sense to them, but it made sense to God. But unfortunately, I wasn't courageous enough to just do my own thing, just take what I knew to be true and just do it. And, and it requires courage. You know, courage is not the absence of fear, but it's, it's, it's pressing forward in the midst of fear. I have had a battle with fear for years. I have um, tried really hard to understand, to, to eliminate fear from my life, but I finally have surrendered and accepted that it's always going to be a part of our lives. And when not going to go any uh, we're not going to avoid it so the best thing to do is walk through the fear walk through um walk through the fire 
you know so your concern about what other people think about you will actually end up getting you in trouble because what you will find yourself doing is adjusting and amending your plans to suit other people and for it to become acceptable to their eyes so how can we be practical in discovering the opportunities that surround us during this crisis the answer is to work on your mind you like i said at the beginning you are the same person before during and after the crisis and if you have too much going on in your, in your life you are not going to recognize the opportunities if you are focused so much on other people's opinions or you have a fear of pain or you are doubtful of your source or you don't plan these would actually stop you from seeing the opportunities i believe that the picture that you already have in your mind is a great opportunity i believe that it is you're capable of making it as huge as big as you imagine it could possibly be but you know while there are external factors that can make things difficult i want to say that our greatest challenge tends to be us you know i think it was socrates that said that the unexamined the unexamined life is is not worth living i think that's what he said you know, and when I started my business uh, 10 years ago, when I lost everything in the recession, um, the reason I was able to start, the reason I started was because I had nothing to lose. You know, I had no fear of failure because I had already failed. I was already right there at rock bottom. But it shouldn't have to be that way before we start. I think that if we are able to really work on our minds and take care of our minds and, and, and be observant of the thought processes and the mindsets that tend to trip us because it's individual, it's for all of us, it's different, then it will make uh, it would make all of the difference. And I'll end quote by an anonymous author that says a crisis is an opportunity riding the dangerous wind. I think that opportunities have always abounded around us. They are there, they are plenty. It's just that in the space of a crisis, it just requires a little bit more courage, which I think um, we can all have by the help of the Holy Spirit. So don't start and don't be afraid to fail, you know, or rather don't, don't stall, don't be afraid to, stick, to fail and just start. Thank you so much for having me. I'll hand over back to the host. Wow. Wasn't that awesome? Thank you, Tux. Uh, one of the reasons why I love when we get together and when we get to chat is the opportunity to uh, really engage um, uh, in the one-on-one -on -one discussion because I always have so much, find so much value in it. And also I believe it's always so, um, there's always so much that you know you bring out some very practical things that i love so i know we have one question a lot of vibrant comments during the chat which was awesome um please for the purposes of what we're doing uh if you can please use the question and answer feature to post any questions and even comment well we can leave the comments on the chat but for the questions so that we can we can run through them. I have some, uh, given some of the points you raised that I would also follow up on, but there was one that came very quickly um, when you were speaking. I know you kind of answered it. It came from um, Tumike. She said, how do you know when or if an opportunity is the right one? How can you access opportunities that come your way to make sure you're going for the right one? And if I can caveat this a bit, you know, um, the, there's a, there are a lot of voices, there are a lot of opportunities. You know, we are, we are talking about, you know, from a business perspective um, for any one of us. And we don't have to be business women. You know, we could just have passions. And there's some logical things that are going through, right? <laughs> you hear on the news, the UK doesn't have enough PPE. They're about to run out. And you're like, let me get the tailor that, you know, I have and some materials. And voila, there's a business here. Let me start making face masks. I mean, I was listening to... Um, um, Nikki Alder talking to uh, Pastor Kwaju and Nikki Alder said, you know, this is probably a good time to create face masks for children. We don't know how long this is going to be. Put Spider-Man on it, put, you know, all of that. And you can tell there were almost a thousand people and people are like, oh, great idea, great idea, great idea. You know, so what would you say, especially um, from your experience, um, when you lost everything in the last um, recession and we're in a very tough time and now you have a business that is able to withstand it what's that journey that um, helped you discover which of the opportunities that presented themselves to you were the right one I know absolutely the Holy Spirit will guide us but I also wanted some additional tips that could also stir us as well thank you so I'll say is um, first of all is 
knowing what your own skills and your own abilities are and being aware of what your weaknesses are. For example, if there was an opportunity to, um, I don't know, make face masks for me, for example, um, and let's say there was zero uh, people in the world making it or there was no, um, that we had no, no contact with the outside world, so I couldn't even outsource it to anyone, it would, I, I wouldn't be able to do it because it's not even something I can teach myself to because I know that I don't have the patience to get things done, uh, to, 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 to pay attention to detail in that manner. So you have to know what your own weaknesses are and know what your strengths are. Now, it's not to say that if you have a weakness in an area, you should avoid it. It's just that the knowledge of your weakness allows you to then outsource the weakness to somebody whose strength it is. And when it comes to recognizing the opportunities that are right for you, I think that the fact that you even noticed it in the first place and it's tugging at your heartstrings, it is an opportunity that's right for you. When people say, is it right for me or is it not? What they're really asking is, will I fail or will I succeed? And failure and success to a great extent is down to us and it's down to what we do with it. You know, there's been so many times in my business journey where I felt like, you know what, I think if we're, it's a, we need to close this thing down. It's not working, it's too much. But you know what keeps me going? It's the knowledge that regardless of what business I face, the challenges are still going to be there. You know, and one lesson I learned when I was in, I went to boarding school in Nigeria and it was a military boarding school. And um, my mom, I remember one time she came to see me and I was lamenting about how difficult it was and how challenging it was. And she said, do you want to come home? I schooled in the north of Nigeria. Do you want to come home to Lagos? And I was like, yeah, I do. I want to. And she says, but well, listen, Tokes, if you go, go back to Lagos and school in Lagos, in another boarding school in Lagos, the problems will be the same, but the faces will be different. Is that what you want? And I think that that's the thing is, is that when we're looking at opportunities, business or any kind of opportunity for that matter, is recognize that the challenges are pretty similar to that to, to each other. You know, whether I'm, I'm making baby furniture or I'm doing a fashion line, yes, there is competition that's different and, and there are other external factors that make it different, but you've got to make sure that your decision making is not based on how easy is this going to be or how confident is this going to, am I going to feel in going for this? Absolutely. Thank you. I think that's a brilliant answer. You know, when you were speaking, it reminded me of a message I was listening to and a comment that was made, you know, when uh, the Bible talks about um, Rebecca having twins in her womb. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she said she was struggling, you know, and she didn't know what the struggle was. And then God revealed to her that you have two nations that are struggling with each other. To her, two babies, two nations, you know, but in the womb, they struggled. They came out and they struggled. They went their different ways. And the next time they came together, they struggled. And that reminder was like, life is, but there's always a struggle for in life. It, it could be no matter what level of business. We all think if only I had this fancy job, if only my business was booming, for every level there is a challenge, there will be a struggle. So it's who you are that's approaching it that really makes a difference. And I think you make a great point. Now, quickly, somebody said, how is it possible? You, I know you said this was very important. How is it possible to be the same person after a crisis? But I think um, what we may want to pivot, I think what I've said is, how is it possible to be a, or how is it possible to be a different person after the crisis? Most of us have paused. We've been forced to stop. But we don't want to come out the same. Yes, we self-help books, do, do all of that. We, everybody hears that. But, you know, in an intrinsic way, and maybe this will go back to your very first slide, how do we ensure that we don't come out the same person? When we're coming out of this crisis. I think oh, what, what are the things that makes us stay the same person either way? Okay, so for example, when I when the whole thing started, not probably the best example, but when I when the whole event, the, the whole crisis started, I struggled for um, the first week, the first two weeks even, I literally could not come to terms with it. And I, I thought, oh, it's going to be business as usual. Oh, that's fine. I, I can handle this. And okay, fine. Close the shop. That's okay. I'll just walk from home and, and all of that. And I thought that I could carry on at the same pace that I was working at previously. But then 
eventually I have to surrender to the situation and say, you know what, things are different. There really is a global crisis. People are actually dying, you know, and, and, all of the, and, and, and people are, are being sick and this is a real problem that we have. So it's impossible to actually remain the same person. When I said that earlier, what I meant was that the gifts and the talents you have within you and your viewpoint of life is pretty much the same throughout unless you make the decision to change or to alter it. So if, for example, you were um, lazy and you, and you just hated anyone, people who hate mornings are, are not necessarily lazy, but let's just say that you were just not a morning person and, oh, this is too much for you. I know you couldn't even get yourself out of bed to do the basics every day. If you carry on life like that, just because there was a crisis does not mean that you're going to suddenly start waking up early in the morning after the crisis. So you have to be intentional about the changes that you want to make in your life. And I think that one way that you can do so is, I mean, this is such a great opportunity for us because everything has quietened down. You know, you can take out everything in your life, take that jar of rocks, pebbles and stones and empty it completely, wash the jar out and now start to pick only the things that you want to carry on with, only the activities you want to stick to, only the people that you want to keep in your life. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really really good. Good. You, 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 some people literally do need to go, you know, and, it, and it's, in some cases, if they can't go like family members, for example, um, and, and, and by people, I, I usually would use the example of someone who is quite negative in their pronouncements and in, in the things that they say to you so much so that it affects your mind. Mm -hmm. Then you need to um, reorganize the, or the order of your friends, reorder, reorganize the order of your relationships. You've got to make those kinds of changes. And some people, you have to set new boundaries for them. So all of those changes do need to happen because otherwise you'll be forced to change, but not necessarily in a positive way. So the crisis situation, like being in a pressure cooker, we are not going to, it's not going to be the same afterwards for many of us, but there are habits that might remain. There are mindsets that might remain unless you make the choice to, to change them. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Excellent. I love this. And I think that's a good one into the next question, um, which um, I can't believe we only have... <laughs> You know, we, we, although we still have a portion of it, <laughs> there's also, and, and I'll say this to everyone, you know, uh, part of what we wanted to do, even after talking to Tox, was to share a potential opportunity and some tools um, within the network that we feel might be of benefit um, to, to most of us. And even if it's not directly to you, that you can possibly pick up on and look at other things. So we'll, we'll take a few more questions and then we'll, we'll work our schedule around to make sure that we can accommodate the rest of our timings. But thank you so much for this. I mean, somebody had said, um, can you recommend a good book that can help with one's mind to achieve a goal or vision? Because we know as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I can let you just give maybe talks if you have one on, off the top of your head, but I can definitely say that um, we had um, a brilliant session in January. We had uh, Ajibike Lawson from from Cornerstone Counseling, join us. And she did, that was a deep one. So um, if you go on our YouTube page, you should be able to uh, listen to that uh, web, um, webinar, which was awesome. And I think we'll send it out as a link. Um, a lot of fantastic information that's in there. But on a personal level, it talks at the top of your head. Do you have any particular book that you really I liked? And love 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 a few authors that I love. I like Valerie Burton, and she's got a book called Listen to Your Life. Mm. And it's really about um, watching you, looking back into, looking into, the, into your life as opposed to reacting to everything that's going on around you and making changes from within. And what's your life telling you? You know, because it's so easy for us to be inspired by people and not be inspired by who we really are. So, mm -hmm. so Listen to Your Life by Valerie Burton is a great one. Um, As a Man Thinketh, I just finished that with my um, group of women book club and it's mind blowing. I was so sure I'd read that book before, read it only last week and it's, it was like the first time for me. So that's definitely another book that I recommend. Excellent, thank you very I much. Alan, As a Man Thinketh. Okay. All right, thank you, Tux. Um, There was a question that came through earlier, and it says, is every negative comment a dream killer? How do you know to take some advice or leave some? And if we can use that, that was under the dream killers, but there was also another one that says, you know, when you talked about how do you be, avoid, 
how do you avoid living in other people's opinions? Um, so we say, what if you have a mentor specifically for an idea that you have? Um, and they have an opinion that doesn't go with your vision. How do you correlate that? Should their opinion matter? So I guess this is the tussle between sometimes you do have subject matter experts who can provide information. And we have a lot of that right now, isn't it? Um, going out there. But in some cases, how do you know, yes, I should. This is a new place. My mentor is helping me. Or if it contradicts what you feel in your heart, how do you manage that? And like I said before, when a negative comment is coming across, um, as if it's to kill your dream. Is it, is it sometimes you that's taking it the wrong way, you know, or how do you manage some of those scenarios? Okay, for the first question about the negative comment, I think the first thing to do is your dream should not be exposed until, your dream should not be exposed while it's still in its infancy because it's still very fragile, it's still vulnerable. You need to have a sound idea and build a shell around it before you even present it to anyone. So, so first of all, there is work that needs to be done in the dark, in the secret place, before you even start presenting it to people or saying anything to people about it. When people have negative comments, um, I think that it depends on one, who, this, who the person is, which is why it's important to constantly reevaluate and order your relationships and know those who have need, you need to set boundaries amongst them. There are some people that would speak to me and while they're speaking, every word is literally just ricocheting out of my ears because I don't, I don't receive what they say. Mm -hmm. So the person is coming from really does matter. Is it somebody that you, you genuinely respect? Um, and I don't mean you admire because admiration can be a bit of a dream killer as well. If you admire somebody, you might admire them so much you want to be like them and you take on everything they say and you don't do your own thinking. So it might, it's, it depends on who the person, who it's coming from. I think that if someone's giving a negative comment and it depends on, again, what, a, what is a negative comment? Is it constructive criticism? You need to have a weakness in your spirit to know that this is right. But this is also where your weaknesses come in. I know that I, I don't like being criticized. This is actually a weakness of mine. Like I don't, I, I, my hair stand up on the back of my neck when somebody shoots down my idea or say anything like that. So because I'm aware of that, it means that I'm also aware of my tendency to throw everything everybody else says out and miss out the good stuff. So it's two things. One, know who you're receiving it from. And two, know the state of your own mind so that that way you can effectively filter out is what they're saying. It doesn't make sense. Is it true? Is it right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to mentors, um, again, it's the same thing. I would not go to a mentor that's in a different industry from me, for example. So mm -hmm. I would use a mentor that is well versed in the direction that I want my where business is concerned that I want my business to grow in. So when that's the case, it means that I am borrowing experience that he has that I don't have and I may not have. So that's what mentorship is. At the beginning, you need to establish exactly what you're in mentorship for. Do you want guidance or do you want an actual plan? Tell me what to do and I'll do it. Uh, tell me what to do and I'll do it means that you also have to remember that your own personality and your own stamp or whatever is doing is essential. And remember that he has his own or she has her own, which she might want to put on there. So again, it's, it's a bit of a balancing game and understanding that this is the vision I have. If you have a complete picture, the, the, another important point is having the complete picture of what you want right at the beginning because the complete picture is the invisible version of the full manifestation and the physical so you already have the complete picture in your mind and whatever advice they're giving you has got to lead to the complete picture it's got to you know if, if it was a case of an architect who wanted to build uh, for residential or for commercial for example what is the goal what's the picture of it is it because you want to make money or is it because you want to provide housing for people now if you want to provide housing for people and your mentor says i think you should do commercial because that's where the money is then that's not part of your picture that's not what you want yes you might make money from it but is it what you want? Are you going to end up providing the housing that you wanted to provide in the end? In the end? Excellent, excellent. 
<laughs> oh no, this is this is fantastic. I mean, if I take us back, ladies, the one of the key things we're doing on today's call is looking at the opportunities in the midst of a crisis. And one of the things that we found we're, in our conversation, I, I really want to draw out is you are the biggest um, factor in any success going forward. And so as we look at some of these opportunities, how we look at it, how we play it out, it's also important. And, you know, like, uh, you know, talks you shared earlier on in the beginning about starting from the inside, starting from the spirit, starting from, you know, that essence of knowing that the spirit knows the future and you need to engage and tap into it and get your strength from there. Uh, I think that it even ties in, you know, some of the opportunities that we can discover during this time. We can take two more questions before we go to the next segment but before we do that because it's tied these questions are tied to what we want to do can everyone in 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 what 15 seconds um just type in something in the chat room to tell us where do you think the biggest opportunities now lie in terms of a business what area what field i know we gave some in the beginning um now we didn't use this as a poll because we wanted it to wanted to have different ideas but i know we have a lot of people on the call but we'll be curious to know what your thoughts are. Um, and uh, I'll take the other two questions while we're throwing that in the chat room and I'll look out for it. I can see someone saying technology, for example. But while that is coming through, I wanted to ask um, Falake's question before I go to Ronke's question. So Falake said, can you please explain or shed more light on the difference between having multiple streams of income and being a jack of many trades, master of none? And that's why I'm, I said everyone should put a, a question in the chat room because we're all going to see, oh, you know, this is going to be, this is going to be hot cake. Men, guys, you know, data science, you know, we can see the opportunities, but is it for everybody? So um, if we can please um, uh, to answer that particular question for us while we look at what the comments are and then we'll take the final one. Okay, so I think that you definitely have to be a master of one trade and then your other sources of income can be, they can be supporting, um, so they can be fans if you like, they can be supporting businesses, they can be completely different, they can be related in the same industry, relate, they can relate to the same industry or be completely different. But I think that you definitely need to have one major source of income and then uh, you know your multiple sources of income should not take away from your excellence and the delivery of your main source of income because that then waters everything down um, you would lose credibility, you would lose customers from the main source. So that, that would be my, sort, my, my short answer, is there's got to be one master and then you can have some others. I love that. And I think there was a comment towards that that said, um, you can be the jack of all trades, but a master of one. And I think that's beautiful. And I think part of being a jack of all trades could be, you know, investing in certain types of businesses, collaborating. For those who are at the emergence conference, we talked about different streams of revenue. Some of them are partnerships with people, whereby they may be the master of that particular one. And you bring something to the table there um, to add, and you can be a part of that revenue stream. Um, you can go into uh, what we believe could be investments. Like we've seen, there are a lot of things coming here, online activities. You may take what you're a master of um, and then turn it into an online business, to your point, which can generate for you offline um, um, income and online residual income. You know, so this is a period for a lot of creativity. Thank you, everyone. Software design, you know, technology, mental health. Absolutely. We you know we can see that this is very important. Logistics, probably in a very different way now food and hospitality being very different. Thank you, everyone. Um, the idea is that we're seeing all of these as um, fantastic things that uh, we can do, we can leverage on. But what's the importance, so many questions coming through, <laughs> let me just quickly take this, of um, Ronke said, you know, how do we manage our time space? I know some things may be obvious. So uh, in one liner, um, uh, Tokes, um, these are fantastic <laughs> opportunities have come. I know it's difficult with a big question yeah. like that. Um, and we all want to prepare. We don't want to be the same person that came into the pandemic going out. Like you have said to us, you've told us about the rocks, the pebbles, the things we need to focus on, how we need to get our mind spirit in place. Um, how do we also get, uh, and you talked about planning. So I think you've answered it, you know, obviously, you know, but what would you say are some of the top things that we can do daily to stay on top of our goals, dreams, going forward and taking all of these potential opportunities? I think if every day you write a day in your life in the future, that's, that's like such 
a game changer for me. Um, I had an experience, I know you said one line of very, very quickly, I had an experience um, some eight years ago or so when I was, my son was very ill, and he was in hospital and everything and we came back out of this and he was fine and then we went back in and I was afraid. I'm in the emergency room and I'm genuinely scared and I think what if this time he doesn't make it. Last time was touch and go and the Holy Spirit did tell me just write a day in his life and so I wrote a day in his life which was today is the 12th of May 2000 and I don't know 21. You know write a day in the future and you write out word for word, what your life should be looking like at that day, had you followed the steps of your life. So imagine that you just describe the home you're living in, describe what it smells like, describe um, the sounds in your house, describe what you can see. When I do it, I even write the colors of my walls and I say that I'm so glad I love my, my chimney breast and I love the exposed beams in the ceiling and I love this and I love that. Um, oh, it rained last night, so the grass is glistening outside. I can see it from where I'm sitting. You describe everything down to the smell down to the sound of your kids even if you don't have children and that's something that you're praying for you hear the sound of your kids coming in and out of the room describe a day in your life every single day the full picture of what you want your life to be and honestly it would keep you focused because it becomes the main rock in your life and no matter what else goes on around you no matter the global crisis no matter the 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 work situation you have a bigger purpose. You have a bigger picture that you're working towards. And these tiny little distractions are not going to take you off course. Absolutely. This is amazing. That, I mean, that was a fantastic note for us to start rounding up. I know that we still have, I'm going to have Lamy or Dolapo on my team. Please capture um, some of the additional um, questions. There's a question about how do you overcome the mentality of thinking and better at taking directions that's working for others than, lead, than leading. Um, hence, it's hindering me from leading my own business. Also, there was a comment about a recommendation on, on a book on the rock analogy. Um, we will be sending out a link to this. So let me just put some, you know, because we still have one more person who is going to speak, but that's to provide us all with a resource. Um, so what we're going to do um, is that we will provide some more uh, indications. And this is ongoing. Um, we're looking at, you know, some of the engagement and we're possibly going to be doing a second part, a part B to this series, where we're going to uh, dive into um, some more industry elements and specific skills and tools that we need to develop um, as we go along. But I mean, talks has been simply, simply amazing amazing there's been so much for us to glean from what you've shared we will make sure we reach out hopefully everybody registered so first we'll share some more information second thing we'll share is that um epr network we are like we said in the beginning we're a network of a business career professional women um and we uh we have uh, one thing in, in, in common we have a passion for god's kingdom agenda to be established we believe that we've been raised to be at the top of our game of our industry of our field and we want all of the gifts and talents that God has put inside of us to manifest to the world and to bring a solution and to make this world a better place. So we will be sending out also a Telegram link for as many people as want to know more about us, join, get more information, more engagement, talk to the part of that network. So we can discuss some more and, you know, we can engage with us. We can see through her website, her, her business, you know, she's definitely going to be coming up when we, again, when we bring a, a session on business owners and her industry and her which is a very interesting industry um, that she's in and how she's navigated through it so we, we look forward to we definitely look forward to that um, and um, please just give me a minute um, I know there's an anonymous attendee we'll get the answer for the book from talks and for for Laura you know there was a concept I heard uh, talks this week um, and it was called entrepreneur um, and it says a lot of times, you know, most people focus on, you know, my business, what can I do as an entrepreneur, but that you know, there's also a lot that you can do to, when you see yourself within your career or your field as an entrepreneur. Joseph was a classic example. Joseph never really started his own business, but he was very good 
at working for other people, taking their dreams, their visions, and bringing all of his creativity such that he rose to a place of such prominence and became a subject matter expert, you know? And all of a sudden, his business became actually like one of the, I will use the word, a top consultant. So I think Tox has said a lot about the different ways in which you understand your passion, your pain, and your resource. Um, depending on the kind of business that you're interested in, and if it's your passion, your approach might be different. But I just wanted to encourage everyone that even within our career, we are entrepreneurs. We are gaining knowledge. We are using our, our, our skill, our expertise to grow the business that we're in and also for us to future become, in the future become a subject uh, matter expert. So thank you very much, everyone, for those questions. And I'll hand over now to, uh, I think, Dolakmo, um, who would very quickly take us. Um, we have a couple of announcements, but I think, let me, I think this is a good segue, if, if it's OK. Um, Dolapo, forgive me, just because of the time. Um, but let's launch the poll right away. I'll just quickly take everyone through this and then we'll let Chichi uh, go through. Um, actually, <laughs> I know I'm rushing everybody. Let's jump to Chinemes slide, please. Um, just because he has some resources. We'll send information on our next webinar. Um, we, we, we have a couple of things that we're doing, but there are a couple of business opportunities. Like we said, EPR is, we're very global. Uh, a lot of our uh, members are in, in the US, uh, quite a few people in the UK. You know, we had our emergence conference last year for the first time in Lagos. So we have people in different areas, but there are a couple of things staring in our hearts and we want to really strengthen our business network and some of the opportunities that we are seeing coming our way and we want to make sure we tap into it, irrespective of our of our location because of the collaborations that we, be, we believe would help everyone be a part of, of that. So let me just quickly hand over to uh, Chichi to take us through the next section. Yes, ladies, thank you so much, Tox, uh, for that wonderful presentation. I know that I will certainly be going back to watch over and over again. Um, and ladies, part of what we spoke about today was writing down the vision, right? Writing down the plan. And one thing that I love that Tox said, um, Ms. Tox said, is that Oftentimes, our fear of failure is what stops us from actually moving, right? Um, and then we seek ideas and, and we sort of get stalled in some of these failure modes. One of the biggest hindrances or perceived hindrances or perceived risks to us actually launching into the passion that God has put on our hearts is the issue of finances. How do we actually launch this forward? What are the resources available to me? And this is a critical time. You know, in moments of transition, there is always a resource. If that's something I've learned today, there's always a path ahead that we can forge. And we just wanted to bring additional value to this seminar, um, just to share some, some things that are on ground that you can leverage now. You know, some, someone said, I don't have a small business. You can start now, right? And there are resources available. And I just want to hand it over to a subject matter expert. Chinana SMI is a CPA CFE. So she has spent over 10 years dealing with issues of tax, finance, and all of that. And she just wants to share very briefly um, what the government is doing to assist small businesses in this area. So if you have an idea, if you've been thinking about, well, there's not enough money, um, she's going to sort of go into the nuance of all the options available. And we we hope you can give us a few minutes for that because we, we know it's going to add value. And again, you know, we're going to uh, uh, piggyback off of this to a separate session if there's enough interest, and I think there's enough interest. So with that, I'll hand it over to Chinamet. Chinamet, thank you so much for your time. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So this is going to be really quick. Um, it's really just an overview because um, the times where we're in, you just kind of have to share information. And EPR has really done a good job collaborating with each other, sharing information. That way we can be known also as a resource center, right? So um, here in the US, we have the SBA and the Small Business Administration. And I have to tell you, they've been operational and very pivotal even before now. However, desperate times call for desperate measures. And so there are resources that are available specifically for the times that we're in right now. And one of the things that I tell people is, I don't care what facet of life you're in, please take advantage of everything that's available. So if you have a mortgage and they're offering a deferment, not um, the other types of products that they have out there, 
But if there's something that you, that you need and you can utilize to save and conserve money and prepare for the future, please do that. Um, before I start talking about what the SBA does have, I will have to tell you that $349 billion was carved out for small businesses. And in less than two weeks, that money or that um, funding had already been exhausted and depleted. However, there's still a lot of applications that are in queue. There's still applications that are being processed right now. So I don't want you to feel discouraged I think what you want to get away from this is go to the SBA website, start looking up the information and start getting your numbers ready and, in a, you know, get them prepared, get them ready so that once opportunity comes knocking again, you're able to launch in. So I'm going to start with the website right here. There's the website sba.gov. Please feel free to go there and search. And if I can have the next slide, there are four specific, um, programs or options, funding options that the federal government here, they've created. How can you tap into the $350 billion approximately um, that was provided for under the CARES Act? One, you can go through the PPP, which is the Paycheck Protection Program. This is for small businesses that have employees. Obviously, there's a definition of small. Um, and trust me, we're all small business because there are businesses that are making millions and they, they're still considered small and they're still taking advantage of this. Um, one thing to note for the PPP in the fine print is there's, there are opportunities for you to get in into the PPP program even if you don't have specific people on your payroll, but then you as a business owner, you're collecting, you're actually paying yourself, you're supporting yourself through that business. So technically you are um, an employee of a business. And really the, the thought behind that is you can have members, you can own a business and employ someone to manage it for you. So you could have members and you can have managers, but a member can also be a manager. Like I'm a business owner and I also manage my business. I work for my business. And so um, make sure that you're not discouraged from the PPP. And then there's the most popular, which is called the EIDL. Um, and this is for the emergency um, and it's for any of the disasters and it's again we're calling it an advance because the loan of ten thousand dollars is generally forgivable meaning you don't have to pay it back and it's called an advance because if you're looking for more money they're going to advance you this ten thousand dollars in order to then give you more later based on what you need and then there's the sba express bridge loans and the SBA debt relief. So now the bridge loan, they've always had a loan to help small businesses. However, during this crisis, they understand that there's an urgency and there's a need to get funds out to people quickly. And that's why you see the word express in there. It's what they've had before, but now um, it is expressed because it's expedited. And of course, you can get up to $25,000 um, and the debt relief. Debt relief, if you have specific um, debt that you already have, they're able to help you um, to secure, I guess, to make sure that you don't default on those. All right, so let's go to the next slide. I specifically um, added the slide on here because I felt like a lot of the questions I got from my clients were, what do I need? Can you give me an example? Now, the EIDL, which I said was the most popular, it had the least amount of commitments, if you would. It had the least amount of um, documents that you needed to show. So a lot of people applied for it. And let me just stop to tell you that um, in some of the other crises that have happened in the US, I've been involved in investigating it and figuring out what happened, who got the funding and all of that. And I could tell you 2012 when Sandy happened and 2008 when um, Lehman Brothers went down and all, you know, the mortgage crisis, I was heavily involved with that and also heavily involved with Sandy. And I suspect that that is exactly what's happening now. When you tell people, a small business, freelancers, gig, you know, you're like an artist, you're a gig person, you play your guitar, you're considered a small business, and you tell people those sort of loose terms in the CARES Act, 
what you've essentially created is people are going to organize and form a business overnight, apply and get the $10,000. So this was really um, a question of speed. How many people, like how quickly could you type? How quickly could you get in and apply? Um, and that's exactly what we saw for Sandy. Millions of dollars were gone in a second because people organized and they were helping with the relief efforts overnight. So please, you and I are legitimate businesses. So I really want to encourage you because I've gotten a lot of calls. People are saying, man, the $350 billion is finished. You know, what do I do? Are we left um, to just, you know, out to dry and just not get anything? Please, as believers, as Christians, I think that we need to get the information, which is what the session is going to do today. Then go back and do your research. I added this particular slide to give you some teeth to what they might be looking for. And don't be discouraged with the PPP because even if you don't have um, employees on your payroll, you as a manager of your business um, is also considered someone who is getting paid or getting support from the business. So take a look at this really quickly. And with that, I think I am right on my 10 minutes that I was, um, <clears throat> 10 minutes that I was given to talk about this. I think a lot of people don't really know about this. Um, they're not aware that there's um, an actual provision in the CARES Act for small businesses. Most people are aware that they're looking for $1,200 to hit in their bank account. But let me tell you, $1,200 is nothing compared to keeping your business afloat. I will mention one thing though, because I had a couple of people call me and ask, do I have to pay back, you know, federal government, they're going to track you down, they're going to hunt you down and, 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 and get you. Let me tell you this, they're all considered loans, right? But if you look at the fine print, one of the things I was um, talking to Chichi about, I said, I'm curious, to, I'm, curious to know, I'm curious to know what the fine print is. If the fine print is that the loan behind it is actually... 1% over the next two years or 2% over the next two years. Those are incredible rates. You're not going to walk into any bank and get a percent or 2% on any type of loan. Even if your credit score is the highest, 850, you, those rates are incredible. So please guys, let's do our research. Right now we're collaborating. So go back and get your ducks in a row and let's see what happens. Um, once I hear anything, I will be sure to reach out to PN and make sure that EPR is aware of what's going on. Thank you so much for that. Um, and you know, this is great information. And ladies, with that, we wanted to say, you know, when we present information on the SBA, yes, it is a US entity, but you know, one of the major things that EPR prides itself on is this idea of collaboration. Our UK ladies, our ladies from other regions of the world, you're not left out, right? And, and this brought us to the idea of an EPR business directory. We've heard a fantastic talk today by Ms. Tokes um, sharing about what is your vision? You know, what's, what's, who do you need to connect with even during this crisis? What sort of alliances do you need to form or break? Um, and how do you begin to shape the future? One of the ways that we can do that is by tangible, authentic, organic collaborations. And we have so much talent in EPR, right? And so that's why we want to launch the EPR business directory. We're really, really excited about this. You know, we had a, a leader session um, a couple of, last Saturday actually, and right after the session, like 30 women just posted, you know, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Here's this resource, here's this resource. I'm an expert on this. I can help you if that's what you want. And this is the sort of conversation that we want to bring to everyone here today. So I'm going to type something in the chat box. It is the EPR Leadership Directory. It is just a very, very short form that you can click and be able to showcase the business that you have. Right, and what we want to do, we don't sell your information. This is strictly internal, right? You present the information that you want to, for everybody within EPR, everybody within this conference call, everybody within this webinar to leverage. There might be somebody in the US who has wanted to move something, um, but there's a UK partner who can help them collaborate. That's a collaboration. And again, these collaborations don't necessarily have to exist for all eternity, but how can we leverage our our communal resources now, right? And so that's the EPR business directory. Uh, we just want you to take a moment. It's not for business, well, it, 
for business owners, those who have a business, and if you are considering starting a business, go ahead and fill it out. And you can put in the notes, you know, this is not an actualized business yet. We had some comments saying, is the SBA, is the, um, is the, is the small business administration stuff just for businesses already in session? You know, maybe all you need is just a certification of your board members or a 501c3 application, which takes five seconds to do, right? So as Ms. Tokes said, let's not, um, let's not focus too much on the limitations. Let's focus on the idea and let's leverage it. So go ahead and fill it out um, and let's make sure that we are leveraging our collective resources. And, and with that, um, I'll hand it back over to PM. Please do not neglect to fill out the business directory and we'll share more about exciting things in store for that. PM. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chineme, um, for doing such a great research um, for us of, uh, on the opportunities that are available, how to get funding. Um, she's a fantastic consultant with a strong um, um, CPA background um, and can provide quite a bit of uh, SME advice, even if it's not technically for the different areas that we're in, um, but she definitely is a very strong business consultant. Whether you're in the US, you're in your Nigeria, or you're in the UK, Chinome brings a lot of strategic, um, very um, thought out, uh, but also a very strong prayerful perspective to how to do things. Um, I think she has a lot of wisdom in that area, and I know she'll be a blessing. She's inside the network, and she said, I want to give something back to everyone in this period of crisis. And thank you so much, Chineme, and we'll be engaging you as we go further. Um, I can't even say enough. We had almost 90 women on the call today, and I, unfortunately, some had problems even logging in. They were pinging me, unfortunately, I couldn't see it. But thank you very much, everyone. This is great. Uh, we run this webinar series every month, every third Saturday of the month. Um, we are actually exploring picking it up a notch just because we have, there's some comments made today, we've been thinking about it a bit more smaller groups that we can leverage on. So we'll be doing that. And we have a giveaway every single session. So um, we're going to be um, confirming with um, took some of the books that she um, talked about. Um, um, Lamy, who is on the network, and uh, um, 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 Dolapo have said that they would look at three of those books and give it to some of the new business owners. Sorry, I know some of our ladies are already within the network. We already know you have your businesses. Um, but for a lot of the new ladies, this is your first time and you're going to join uh, the business directory. Uh, please, please, once you do that, uh, just send us an email, send us a message that this is your first time you've done that and we'll do a raffle and get about three of three of those books out. And if anybody wants to challenge me, I know if your network is doing three, I'll personally do one more, making it four. And I'll look for other people. This will be great, right? If you can, just say, okay, tell me what it is. We'll just, you know, if you can give us a, an Amazon voucher, that would be great. Especially if we have some of our old network persons and they want to say, welcome to EPR. So if you want to volunteer a book, let us know. We want to give it to all the new people that will join, join the directory. Once again, Tokes, thank you very much. Thank you for being a member of uh, the team. We have a poll going just to get a quick feedback on today's session. Um, and um, based on some of the commentary that came where we think the next opportunities will be, we'll be running new sessions. If you feel that, you know, this is an area, are you in, you know, potentially a, an area or an industry, you can see potential growth where innovation is coming through, please register on the business directory and send us a message would like to learn more about what you're doing would love for you to um, if you feel that there are things that you can add value to would love to showcase you we're going to be doing a lot of showcasing of our businesses going forward um, but I think I got everything right Chi Chi am I forgetting anything apart from the poll going on we're covered good Tox, I hope you're going to have something nice for dinner. I know your hubby and your lovely four boys. You should see the boys. They are huge. <laughs> they are men. <laughs> um, I'm sure that uh, they're going to do something really wonderful for you because you're an awesome, awesome woman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for spending your Saturday with us. Uh, feel free, like we said, to reach out to us and uh, we'll share with you. We're going to send you an email on how you can join the network and join our Telegram group as well. But thank you. God bless. Have a lovely rest of the weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.